Let's learn how to set up multiple Laravel applications on a single server running Nginx. And we're gonna make these applications accessible via unique domains. This guide assumes you've already had the experience of setting up a single Laravel application. So you know the basics. We're just gonna be focusing on the specifics of configuring multiple applications. Uh, if you need some guidance on just general setup of a Laravel application on an Nginx based server, I do have a guide on that. You can find a link in the description. But jumping right into our example, let's talk about what I've already set up. So I have made sure that my server is prepared to run Laravel applications. So it has all of the required PHP modules. I've got Composer installed. Um, in terms of the demo applications I've set up, I've cloned the code base for them from GitHub. I've run Composer install so that I've pulled in the outside dependencies. I made sure that each of the application has an environment file and that I have the appropriate permissions on the storage and bootstrap cache directories. All right, in all of these steps, this is all covered, as I mentioned, in this other guide that talks about the basics of just setting up Laravel apps. So knowing we've got this foundation in place, let me jump over to my application. I'm currently SSH into the server via VS Code, and I'm in my var www directory. If we look at the contents, you could see I've got two applications. The first one is called demo1, and the second is called demo2. And just to take a quick look at these, if I go into demo one and look at the contents, you see all the basic files you expect with a Laravel application. Let me throw in a flag there so we can see hidden files and just confirm that I do have that .env file. I can also check things like the permissions for things like the storage and then the bootstrap uh, cache directory. Uh, so long story short, everything is set up and ready to go. So we wanna turn our attention to setting up the Nginx configs to serve these two sites. Uh, the way we're going to do that is we're going to go into our etc nginx uh, sites available directory and within this directory we're going to create a config file for each of our sites so i can quickly generate that file in vs code using the code command and i'm going to name the first one just demo1.conf and i'll create another one for demo2 now for the configs we're going to put in these files let me go back to the notes i'm going to grab this server block i'll paste it into each of my config files and then let's edit this for our specific needs. So zooming in here in demo1.conf, the first thing we wanna change is the server name. This is the uh, domain that we want to serve the site from. So for our demo1 application, I have a domain I don't really use for anything else. So I'm gonna use it for this example, and it's just hesweb.xyz. For root, we wanna to point to the public directory within the application. So I'm just gonna update my template here for the appropriate path. In this case, it's demo one. And then everything else we can leave as the default, except for we just wanna come down to the section where we're indicating which version of PHP we're working with. You wanna make sure this is the appropriate version. So in this server, I'm currently running PHP 8.2. And just as evidence of that, I'm just gonna output PHP version. You can see it's 8.2. So I'm just gonna make sure this matches. If you were running something else, say 8.3, you wanna uh, update this as appropriate. All right, so that should be good for demo one. Let's switch over to demo two and do the same thing. For the domain for this example, I don't have another domain that's I'm not using for anything else. So I'll just set this up as a subdomain. I'll use demo and I'll set this up on my code with susan.com domain. Once again, we'll update the root as appropriate for this application. So this is gonna to point to our demo two app and with any Laravel application, we're always pointing to that public subdirectory. And then finally, we'll just double check that PHP version. So we're good to go here. So with those two config files set up, we now need to enable them. The way we're gonna do that is we're gonna create a symbolic link from these files in the sites available directory over to our sites enabled directory. For the command for this, let me go back to the notes that accompany this video. Past the site configs, here are the two link commands we can run. So I'm just gonna copy that and run it. All right, so we're running the link command. The dash S is what makes it a symbolic link. And we wanna make sure we're pointing to the path of our first config file. And like I said, we're symbolically linking it to our sites enabled directory. All right, so I'm gonna run that again, but this time for demo2.conf. And just to confirm that worked as expected, let's move into the sites enabled directory. And if we look at the directory contents, we could see those symbolic links. So here's our demo1.conf is linking to this underlying file. The other thing we could do is we run the command nginx-t, it'll test our configs and just let us know if there's any problems. It looks like we're good to go, so the final step is just restarting nginx to make the changes take effect. We can do that with the system control restart nginx command. So that completes the steps of what we need to config on the server. So now let's turn our attention over to our domain configs. For this, I'm going to pull up the control panel for my domain provider, which is namecheap.com. 
I'm looking at the settings for the first domain I want to configure, which is that atsweb.xyz domain. And I'm going to find my DNS settings. Now, of course, what you see is going to vary depending on who your domain provider is, but all domain providers operate in a very similar fashion where you have a control panel, you have your domains listed, you find that domain, and then within there you can find your settings and your DNS settings. Uh, and your DNS settings is where you're going to essentially configure how that domain works. Uh, DNS settings work with records. You can see I don't have any current records for this domain, so I'm going to create a new record, and I'm going to set up what's called a A record or address record. And for the host value, I'm going to enter an at sign, which in the world of DNS settings, we refer to this as Apex. You can think of it as like a wild card, because what we're saying is that any incoming traffic to this domain should follow the instructions we're about to give it. Uh, and the instructions are to direct to the IP address of our server. So I'm going to put in the IP address of this demo server I'm working on. I want these changes to take effect as quickly as possible, so I'm going to set the TTL or time to live value to the minimum amount of time, which is one minute. And then I'll click this check mark to save my changes. And let's test this out. So in a new tab, I'm going to go to hesweb.xyz. And it's not working, but that's not too surprising. This sometimes happens with DNS records. They uh, oftentimes can take a little bit of time to propagate through the servers before they're active. Even if you set that TTL to a minimum value, it sometimes takes longer than that. So I'm going to refresh it again. And there we go. We could see it's working now. So in that case, it just took a few seconds for those changes to take effect. Sometimes it could be upwards of a few minutes or even half an hour in worst case scenario. So if at first it's not working, just refresh it and give it some time. All right, so that's application number one, running via our hesweb.xyz domain. And so now let's take care of our second application. So pulling up my Namecheap settings again, I'm now looking at the settings for my codewithsusan.com domain. I'm going to go into the DNS settings. This is a domain I use in the real world, so I already have some existing records here. And I'm just going to create a new record. Once again, I'm going to choose a, a record. This time for the host, though, I'm not going to set it to Apex because um, I already have an A record for the Apex. This is the main uh, routing I have set up for this domain. I don't want to change that. I just want to create a subdomain. So that's what I'm going to put in for the host. And for this subdomain, I'll just call it demo. And then once again, I'll paste in my server's IP address. We'll set that TTL to one minute and save the changes. And then let's test it out. And there we go. There is our demo to homepage as expected. And just to emphasize what we've just done, let me create another tab with the first demo application via that atsweb.xyz. And I'm going to pull these up side by side. All right, so two separate applications, two separate domains. One is a subdomain, but they're both running from the same server. And just to make sure we're clear on how this is working, uh, we just set it so that when we go to either of these domains, it's going to route traffic to the IP address of our server. And then on the server side of things, via our configs that we set up, it's going to be listening for traffic to those domains and routing it to the appropriate subdirectory. All right, so when this server sees traffic coming in from this domain, it knows to look in this directory for the files to serve. Likewise for demo one, when traffic comes in for hesweb.xyz, it's going to serve up the files from this path. So with that, we now know how to set up multiple Laravel applications on the same server and access them from unique domains. If you have any questions about this process, if something didn't work on your end as I showed in the video, feel free to leave a comment below and I can help you troubleshoot.